Hey XDA TV, Lance Edmund here. I'm back. Uh, well, sure enough, they allowed me back as long as I make my voice even higher pitched. Well, I can do that. But we're going to be doing today Windows Phone 7. Not a surprise, right? That's what the title says. Anyways, we're going to be doing OAuth. Why OAuth? Well, because the biggest sites like Twitter, Facebook, uh, Foursquare, the big guys out there, um, are using OAuth slash OAuth2 authentication to make sure you as the user are, the, well, taken care of and you understand what the apps you love are doing. Extremely important. And the reason it's important because if it's an untrusted web app slash app, you know exactly what, well, what the developer wanted. Maybe to harvest your friends, maybe collect your personal information. You don't know. So, OAuth is really great can be a pain in the butt. We're going to make it so easy today. You're going to figure, well, why don't I use OAuth? Well, you are. So, let's go ahead and get to it, and I hope you'll stay tuned. Good luck. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to be using Foursquare. Uh, that's going to be the easiest way to teach you. Uh, take note of the authorized URL. Even though it says authorized, we're going to be using Authenticate. Uh, but let's go ahead and create a new consumer, aka app. Uh, we're going to call it XDA O uh, or Auth uh, App. Right? Application website, I'm going to put in my blog, Lance.com compulsive tech dot biz uh, which actually uh, for callback we're going to you know what use the same thing like so now let's go ahead and authenticate with the uh, foursquare I guess it's not really authenticating but it's to authenticate we're a real person let's go ahead and register application okay now here's the most important part client ID let's go ahead and copy that like so um, and now I've already, to save some time, have created uh, the project because I know some people don't like to wait forever. But as you see here, this doesn't have your title and whatnot. This is simply just uh, a browser control. Let's go and take a look at it. So what we did here is we took away the title, which is normally up top here, and we're using just the content panel. We went ahead and added the phone, web browser, um, and then we went ahead and called it OAuth Browser, which is important because we're going to use that later on. The height, which, you know, you can go ahead and stretch, which I did. You don't necessarily have to put it in. You can let uh, Visual Studio do it. Uh, margin and those things as well. Width, 480, because that's obviously the screen size. Uh, and vertical alignment top, because we want it to top. Uh, geolocation enabled, which I did always enable for OAuth type stuff because um, what if we do other things inside the browser anyways in scripting enable true most important that is some of the biggest problems people have with when trying to do OAuth and doing it this method which I haven't noticed too many people trying but um anyways uh, is script enabled true always true you, which you should do anyways because a lot of sites use scripting. Um, but again, like I said, you can go ahead and stretch the heck out of your control here uh, to your liking to make it fit and whatever. Um, so we're, I'm okay with that. So now we'll go here and I, like I said, I've already previously uh, wrote it up because I know a lot of people are impatient. So we're taking our client ID, pasting. I already knew we were going to make the callback URL, um, or URI rather, my uh, blog. And then string address, this is what we're going to be sending to the browser control we just showed you that we created. Here's the address in which uh, we're going to authenticate. And then we're going to send the client ID, which is right up here, basically saying, hey, this is our program, uh, except obviously encrypted. Uh, that's why we're saying client ID equals plus sign, which means we're putting uh, another thing, maybe a string, whatever the case might be, or an extra object. In this case, it's a client ID space. Now, I mean space plus sign. Now, mind you, all these spaces and plus signs does not mean there's a space in between here. This is an all tight uh, address. There's no spaces ever in addresses. Um, underscores and dashes, yes, but never spaces. And then and response type, which 
underscore type uh, token. Uh, token is basically saying, hey, we need a you know token to authenticate this uh, client, and so that they can use our app and per uh, give a permission. Display equals touch. I know Facebook has this too, but I think it's depreciated, uh, which we'll do in our Facebook app. Um, but anyways, we're doing touch instead of pop up or anything else, and then we're saying, all right, now when we uh, you've noticed that hey, this is okay, everything's kosher. Uh, redirect URI being right up here, which is also called the callback URI, uh, send it here. So it's going to send us back an address. Even though we're sending this big address, it's going to send us back an address, uh, which we're going to read. And so all off browser, again, that's what we named the browser, so you can see. Now we're saying once you've navigated go ahead and send all the information to the OS browser underscore navigate which is this function down here as you can see it's highlighted but before we can get there we have to navigate so we're going to navigate to the URI uh, which is address which is right there as you see they're highlighted and then URI kind absolute now if you ever use this uh, control you'll notice you always have to put uh, URI kind in some form of it either absolute or whatever you might need to do depending on uh, the address you're trying to initiate. So now we go down here and this is where uh, the information will be sent. So now that we've navigated, now that we sent the navigate, we're ha making sure it goes to where we navigated, sending it to this section right here, which will collect the information. And response, which we uh, made the string up there, as you see, it's highlighted in all these spots. Uh, we're saying, uh, go ahead and take the E, see that right there? That's the information. The, that's been collected and uh, grab this uh, make it into a string and put it into the string um, now if we took away the two string a lot of times it would not work and you might have issues which I won't go into the whole spiel about it um, now as you see I put the debug right line this is really just for us in fact I'm gonna comment it out it was a stupid idea uh, for me to do it but I'll put optional you could do it um, and then as you see here, we want the last index of the access token equals. That's what's going to be sent from the URI. Uh, remember we said a callback URI? Well, that's going to be in it, usually at the end. And the reason being, that's going to contain our token. So, if the last index of blah, 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 which is the access token, now we're going to say string token. We're making a string called token to store the token that's going to be received. But how do we get it? We're going to put a substring response last index of hashtag access token equals because uh, we're trying to get the, well, the token. And so we're saying whatever the length of this is at the end of it. And so we're saying, again, I put the debug here. This is not needed. Uh, and again, I'm going to put optional. And uh, once we have the token, we're going to send a message box up in the air saying, ha ha, here is your token. Uh, and so, yeah, now let's go ahead and uh, run this baby. I should probably put uh, two string on the token, though. We might have an issue if I don't, but we'll see in a second. So now it's sending it, and as you see, connect your Foursquare account with the XDAO auth app. We'll go ahead and log in. Okay, now we're going to use our uh, email, which you can see this, but I will blank it out in a second for uh, the password. Um, so give me a second. Okay, we're back. So now we'll go ahead and click login. And you could always use your Facebook. Okay, so notice this is me, Lance, and uh, I'm going to log in. And as you see, it knows it as this app and my address, and it says blah, blah, blah. Um, you could either deny or allow. We're going to go ahead and click allow. Now it's authenticating. And voila, now we have the token. You see that? Now this token should be stored either in isolated storage or however you want to store it, but stored safe. And now because we have that token, the greatest part is we can now send requests to Foursquare. Or if this was Twitter, it would be Twitter, Facebook, etc. So there you go. Now you can do OAuth. Just in that little amount of code, we've done it. And, uh, of course, it sent me back to my uh, 
blog here because I didn't tell it to do anything else. And again, I wouldn't have it message box. I would have it then another cool thing that you could have done, which uh, assuming uh, I didn't have that, I could do if uh, token equals, uh, uh, I could do equals null. Well, you know what? I'm not even going to bother. Let's just stop at that, guys. We'll save that for another time. Um, but anyways, thank you for watching. I hope that helped you how to kind of get started in your OAuth adventure. This source code will be available in the message boards in the Windows Phone 7 development. And we'll see you in the next episode.